Hey everybody, Carl Schuff here from Greensock, and today's quick tip is about creating a very basic play pause toggle button. So here my animation is paused, I hit play, the animation plays. That also changes the text to say pause on the button so that when I hit it again, it pauses. So we're just going to be toggling the paused state of this animation. And the same concept is going to work for toggling the reversed state of an animation too. So here I have a very basic timeline set up with a single stag or two inside of it that's just moving a bunch of circles around. And I want to configure my pause button so that when it's clicked, we're going to toggle the paused state of the button. Um, all animations inside of GSAP have a pause method, which I imagine you're familiar with. And that's simply going to pause the animation when it gets clicked. So now it's playing, I hit pause, and now it pauses. Very nice. Uh, clicking again isn't going to toggle, so we don't want to have to create a separate play button, so we want to create one button that does both pausing and playing. Now, what you may not know is that GSAP also has a paused method, which acts as a getter and setter. Um, I'm just going to put a very simple alert in here, and I'm going to call tl.paused, and this is going to get the paused state of the animation. So let's just run. All right, we're going to pause, and then we're going to say that, okay, the paused state is true. So that's acting as a getter. Um, there's no parameters being passed into the paused method. So what you can also do is let's get rid of this. So we've used it as a getter. Now I'm going to use it as a setter, and I can say, you know what, tl.paused, and I'm going to pass in the value of true. And that's going to have a very similar end result it's going to pause the timeline. And you may be asking, well, why would you do it this way if you could just call tl.pause? Well, the bonus here is that what I can do is instead of passing in the value of true, I can pass in the opposite of the current paused state. So it would look like this. We're going to do the opposite of tl.paused, okay? So we're gonna hit run. When I hit pause, it's gonna say, okay, I'm going to set my pause state opposite of the current pause state. So I can just click and click all day long and we're toggling the paused state as simple as that. Now the same thing would work if we were to toggle the reversed state. So let me just very quickly show you how that would work. I'm going to change tl.pause to reversed and reversed and hit run. And just imagine the pause button doesn't say pause. So now I'm reversing and every time I click I'm changing the direction of the animation so um, it's really pretty cool now that I've changed the the paused state I just went back um, if you want to change the text here's an interesting way of doing it I'm gonna say hey you know what pause button your inner HTML is going to be equal to either a value of play or pause and what we're gonna do is use an inline conditional to say alright let's check the TL dot paused state okay and if that is true, then we're going to set the text to be play. And if it happens to be false, we're going to set it to be pause. Put a little semicolon here and let's see what happens. So we're going to run. We're going to pause and you'll see the text turn to play. Why is that? Because once we paused it, it said if it's paused, then the text will be play or else it will be pause. So when I click again, then the text changes. So uh, two lines of code gives you a really nice um, toggled play pause button. All right, folks, so that's it for today. Enjoy.